In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, no. 
O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weakness in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We know that lots of people spend time and money and energy 
trying to get strong. I think at least three or four times a week I get one of those flyers in the mail for about joining some new health club or whatever that's coming into the neighborhood. And so whether it's with health or financial security or just getting power or prestige in our jobs or in our lives, we, strength, we think of strength all kinds of different ways. And so when we think of strength, different things come to mind. We might think of like physically strong, the things like the television show American Ninja Warrior. This year, among the contestants, was a priest from Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, this priest would certainly not be able to do that. Now, Father Brashears probably could, but not me. Now, we think of people that maybe we know that are strong. Just watching that house be built across from the parish office, I'm amazed at the things that some of the workers can just pick up and carry with seemingly no problem. A few months ago, some electrical supplies got delivered over to the rectory instead of the church by mistake. And they were in a big box, and it was pretty heavy. So I thought, well, I'll just take the box over there myself. Well, when I picked it up, it weighed a ton. I thought, well, I can't carry that all the way across. And I thought, no, I'm not going to bother anyone. I don't need any help. I'll, I'll figure it out a way to do it myself. Then I had the idea of putting it on this office chair that we had over there with rollers on it. And so I put it on there and rolled it across the street. Now that not only looked pretty silly, but it kept falling off. If you can only imagine the scene of me in my black suit pushing this desk chair with a big box across the street. Well, finally, once I got over here and was wobbly, 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 a uh, delivery man, UPS or something, was going into the uh, building and he asked if I needed help. And first I was like, no, no, no. And then I was like, yeah, I do. And so he walked over, looked at the box, picked it up, just slung it over his shoulder with no thought, and just walked right in. I felt like the biggest wimp in the world. Certainly will not be going out for American Ninja Warrior. But St. Paul tells us in the epistle something that doesn't really fit with his kind of strong-willed personality. He says he's content with weakness, insults, hardships, constraints, and even persecution. That does not sound like the strong-willed man that we know Paul to be. And I know that personally, if we think about it, that last line of the epistle is full of meaning. When I am weak, then I am strong. I must admit, for years, that made no sense. It was like, okay, if you're weak, how can you be strong? It doesn't, it doesn't work. After all, we want to be strong, and we're taught from a young age to be self-sufficient, strong, independent, don't show our vulnerable side, you know, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But in reality, if we think about it, the line makes a lot of sense. Because if we are too strong and self-sufficient, then we can convince ourselves that we don't need God. But when we're weak, we know we need God. What is interesting to note is that as society gets more strong, strong, so to speak, gets more material things, becomes stronger, religious practices almost always go down. This is certainly no more apparent than in modern-day Europe, which for so long was the cradle of Catholicism. Now, in some European countries, especially the more affluent ones, church attendance is only about 3 to 5 percent of the population, Christian church attendance. In 20 years, much of Europe will be Islamic. Now, it's like when I was struggling to push that box in the chair across the street. When I finally admitted that I wasn't able to do it, and some along, someone came along to help, it made things better. And time and time again, I'll hear people tell me, and I'm sure you do too, hey, I can solve this problem on my own. I don't need your help or anybody else's help. But sometimes we can't solve problems on our own. And that's when we need to turn them over to God and to ask God and others to help us. An example that I've used a million times and don't like to use, but it's true and it comes from my own life, and that is my fear of public speaking. I have a terrible fear of public speaking, among many other fears, but I don't like to do it. And sometimes I can get stage fright. But it was only when I realized that, hey, I cannot do this alone and ask the Lord for help that I was able to speak publicly, which obviously I have to do on a daily basis. When I thought I could get over my public speaking fear all on my own, just do it myself, read books, look in the mirror, practice, 
That's when it got worse. When I turned to prayer, it got better. It is our lack of faith that makes us weak. And it's that time when we need to admit that we need the help of God or others. That makes us strong in our faith, which is the most important strength that we can ever have. The people we heard in the gospel in Jesus' hometown wouldn't let him perform any miracles. They were like, hey, we know this guy. He's around from here. He's no big deal. He, he can't do any miracles. Well, all of us have faith or we would not be here. Now, those people wouldn't let him believe or do the miracles because of their lack of faith. And there are times in most of our faith lives when maybe it's not as strong as others. Maybe we doubt our faith or have a weak moment or we just get apathetic and quit practicing, or we fall to sin and temptation. But it's in those weak moments that we need a strong faith. And that makes us strong to admit that, hey, we cannot do this alone. When I think of the strongest people I know, I don't think of maybe muscle lifters, power lifters, CEOs or presidents of large corporations, cardinals, things like that. I think of people who may in reality be very weak physically, but they're strong in faith and morals. I was visiting someone several weeks ago who's very advanced in years, and they're amazing to me. They can't really do much for themselves anymore. They're confined to a wheelchair, they have cancer, but most importantly because their faith was so strong that in spite of severe physical limitations, they pray daily, they believe in God and know that God is watching over them and they don't complain. And when I see that person, I don't see someone who's weak. I see a pillar of strength. And that is the kind of strength that I want, the kind of strength that probably all of us should want, because that's the kind of strength that makes us strong in our faith and gives us eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may come to know Jesus, enter into relationship with him, and never be satisfied with just knowing things about him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of wisdom, that we may gain insight through reflecting on the Word of God and find guidance to live as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom of spirit, that God will free us from all attachments so that we may respond wholeheartedly and unconditionally to God's invitations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrant families, 
who face violence and extreme poverty in their homelands, that God will protect them and give us wisdom and courage to respond to their plight with mercy and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family members and loved ones who have turned away from God, that our witness of faith, love, and compassionate service may open them to the God who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the successful recovery of the soccer team trapped in a cave in Thailand, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved departed, especially Dora Sandlin Roberts and Patricia Miller, that all who have died with Christ will rise again to new life with him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And in silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us that through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Trish Wadley. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh! 
bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and to believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Oh
First of all, I'd just like to introduce, uh, many of you know him, but now uh, you see this young man wearing a black cassock now, Harry Brown. He is uh, now one of our four young men from our parish who uh, will be going to the seminary this year. So uh, know that we will keep him in our prayers. And also I would like to thank uh, Patrick Williams for coming out of Altar Boy Retirement uh, to help us today. So thank both of you guys. <laughs> The Boy Scouts will be selling raffle tickets after Mass to help pay for their summer cookouts. Uh, look for a uniform Boy Scout to buy your raffle tickets. This Tuesday, uh, Deacon Zach's series on living the Christian virtues will begin. He will make presentations at noon and then again repeat it at the same thing at 7 p.m. Lunch will be served at noon and wine and cheese at 7, which should make the conversation all the more lively. Uh, there is no cost, but we do need you to RSVP, and the bulletin has details. Also, please place your donations for the Little Free Library in the box outside the parish office. Our next blood drive, which people giving blood is how people save lives, uh, that will be on July 16th, a week from tomorrow. Please sign up in the foyer. Uh, uh, we will be feeding the hungry uh, on July 22nd. If you can, please sign up online. The link is in the bulletin. And now Teresa Bodman would like to give a brief uh, announcement about a new program in our parish. Good morning. Thank you, Father Rick, and all of you for sharing your time with me. As he said, my name is Teresa Bodman, and I'm here to talk about a new initiative for the young and young at heart women of Christ the King called From Martha to Mary. So it's a relevant name because, ladies, how many of you are busy? Like, all of you. I know you. You're crazy. And I also know that when it gets busy, it can be really hard to hear that like quiet, still voice of the Lord and to remember what it feels like to feel empowered in your faith. That requires time, it requires stillness, and truly it requires a community of like-minded people to hold you to that standard. All of those things are really hard to come by in 21st century America. So that's why we created this group. We have a Bible study lined up to grow in our knowledge and appreciation of the word. We have some really exciting and meaningful outreach activities lined up because I know the women of this parish have hearts to serve and you have hearts to love and you also need to be served and to be loved. We want to meet those needs. So this Wednesday at seven o'clock in the formal room, we're having a sip and see. So there'll be wine, appetizers, we'll have some rock solid Catholic women and the opportunity to shape what this ministry is going to look like. If this sounds like something you need, and it is, I really hope you'll join us. So everyone from Archbishop Fulton Sheen to Beyonce has commented on how a society will rise to the level of its women. And we know that it's true. So ladies, we owe it to the Lord, to our communities, and to ourselves to be these fired up disciples for Christ and elevate our communities that much further. So again, this Wednesday, seven o'clock in the formal room, there's more information in the bulletin and I'll be in the back to take down your emails if you want to get further updates from the group. I am so excited to share this with you. God bless you, have a great weekend. Thank you, Teresa, thank you. There's a lot of drinking going on here this week. You can go Tuesday night, Wednesday night. So. <laughs> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.